Is someone trying to ruin Kate Middleton's reputation? After nearly a decade of smooth sailing, Kate has suddenly hit rough waters and someone inside the palace is to blame. Of all the iconic sentences uttered by the Queen, perhaps the most memorable was in 1992 when she said the year had been her Annas Horribilis. In the previous 12 months, Her Maja's beloved Windsor Castle had nearly burned to the ground in a devastating fire. That same year, the marriages of three of her children had spectacularly combusted, while Prince Edward was still living at home and perpetually single. Sadly, nearly 30 years later, Another royal is facing her own Annas Horribilis but this time it is the Duchess of Cambridge. For year upon tedious year, Kate was the perfect royal. She popped out adorable babies, she worked hard, and she made spending hours standing around in John Vito Rossi heels while making polite chit-chat with sweating aldermen look easy. The most biting criticism she faced was probably for her unwavering devotion to a particularly ugly range of tan pumps that she wore with unfortunate frequency. Also, R.I.P. all those hideous nude wedges she loved too. However, over the past 365 days or so, all that has changed. Kate's world has shifted dramatically on its axis. She's gone from a stable, entitled existence, those John Vito Rossi heels don't come cheap, with wall-to-wall -wall glowing media coverage to facing a daily barrage of damaging stories about alleged feuds and tiffs erupting behind the chintz curtains of Kensington Palace. It peaked this week and was claimed Kate had taken the nasty decision to ostracize a Norfolk neighbor, Rose Hanbury, the Marchioness of Commonly. The flurry of reports that followed breathlessly speculated about Kate's surprising mean girl streak and unportrayed her in a flattering light. Then, 48 hours later, we found out the claims Kate had instructed her Norfolk aristocratic mates to phase out Rose were entirely unfounded and that both the women were considering legal action. In fact, according to a report in the Daily Mail, the entire grubby situation is the result of a concerted effort to dent the Duchess's gleaming reputation. It is impossible to know exactly who might be plotting against Kate. However, one thing we do know, unequivocally, is that it is the courtiers, or as Diana famously called them, the men in grey, who really control what goes on in palace life. As royal biographer Anna Pasternak wrote recently, courtiers maintain control by undermining power with gossip and setting up rivalry between courts. Whom? undermining people and weaponizing gossip. Sound familiar? Whether these men in grey are the unseen Machiavellian force behind the anti-Kate campaign or some other hand, this week's revelations do support the idea there is a concerted effort to smear the Duchess's otherwise blemish-free reputation. It would be naive to think, should this be true, that the flow of noxious stories will stop any time soon. All of which means Kate is facing a horrible new reality. Next year marks a decade since Wills grabbed Diana's famous sapphire engagement ring, carted it to Africa and then proposed to his long-term squeeze. For years, it was plain sailing for the commoner turned HRH and now she is stuck in tempestuous, churning waters. But Kate is smart and she is tough and I would wager quite the formidable phone. To whomever is behind this sneer operation, I'd say, watch out. I think you might have underestimated just how adept she is at maneuvering to get what she wants. Don't believe me. Just ask Wills. A royals expert told us the real story behind Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton's feud. They both realize it's in neither of their interests to have these catfight headlines. Dot rumors of a feud between Meghan Markle and Kate Middleton have been brewing for months. Granted, Kensington Palace shut them down in December with a rare statement but little tidbits keep coming out suggesting there's at least tension between the duchesses. There was that story in November about Middleton reportedly leaving Princess Charlotte's dress fitting for Markle's wedding in tears. The chatter is so incessant, in fact, the TLC released a full documentary last month outlining Markle and Middleton's relationship. So what is the truth? Is there really a feud, or is this all rubbish? The answer, according to Royals expert Katie Nichol, lies somewhere in the middle. I think this idea of there being a catfight between the two duchesses has made tantalizing headlines, but I don't believe that, Nicol, a royals correspondent for Vanity Fair and the Daily Mail, tells Glamour. I've never heard from my sources that there has ever been a feud or a falling out. I had heard about an upset over the dress fitting for Princess Charlotte. And I had heard that while Harry was very keen for the two of them to become best friends, there was never that sort of a friendship. She continues. They quite quickly realized they were two pretty mature women quite different women and really the only thing they had in common was they'd married princes. 
not just Prince Harry, I think probably the world wanted them to become best friends. These rumors originated somewhere, though, and Nichols says there's never smoke without fire. I do think there is some truth to there having been some tension not just between the duchesses but between the dukes, as well, she explains. As we all know, things can gather momentum pretty quickly. So while I think there's been tension, I don't believe there has been some feud. That being said, it's Nichols' understanding Markle and Middleton mutually decided at some point to put on a united front. I do know that Meghan and Kate have come to an agreement to get along, to make an effort, to be amiable and warm toward each other in public, she says. They both realize it's in neither of their interests to have these catfight headlines. It's not what either of them want. It's unclear whether the Duchess has reached this resolution after having a one on one conversation. They have, of course, hung out solo in the past, but when that last happened is a mystery. I know in the early days Kate invited Meghan over to apartment 1A for tea, Nichols says. Obviously, she took her on that high profile trip to Wimbledon, so they have spent time together. But what I think hasn't happened is they haven't become best friends out of all of it. That's not to say they hate each other. I don't believe that to be the case at all. There you have it, people. It seems like Markle and Middleton are just your standard sisters-in-law, not besties, but not enemies, either. If you want more tea on the royals, pick up Katie Nichols' book Harry and Meghan, Life, Loss, and Love, out April 9th. Meghan's biggest strength is also her fatal weakness. Meghan Markle has many admirable qualities, but one has palace staffers concerned and it spells disaster for her survival in the royal family. Here's something I often wonder about, do the royals ever have to do performance reviews? Sure, they are an actual family but being royal doesn't just mean drinking gin mid-morning whenever you fancy, collecting emeralds and getting to see your face on postage stamps. They are also all members of an archaic institution which has been around for a millennium. Ensuring the survival of that creaky beast requires dull, monotonous graft, year after year, decade after decade. All new hires, aka the new husbands and wives, are consequently dragooned into the family biz. So, I'll ask again, do you think the royals are ever graded on their previous year's work achievements? Because if so, I think the Buckingham Palace Mandarins would give the Duchess of Sussex a big, red must do better while they peer over their half moon spectacles and glower at her. No, not because she scribbled on bananas or crossed her legs in the Queen's presence or even because she dared to paint her nails a dark shade, the horror. But because, in their eyes, she has committed, and continues to commit, what they consider a terrible offense. I'm talking about showing emotion. Elevating interest in the royal family to unprecedented heights and in the former colonies too only gets you so far. Whether it be a sheer joy when she meets schoolchildren or dogs or when she spies her haughty husband during a walkabout, Meghan is a woman who often wears her feelings on her, vintage Dior, sleeve. It is not just happiness either. When her father Thomas Markle was perpetually appearing on TMZ to castigate his daughter, the former actress betrayed her, totally understandable, anger and hurt by giving five friends tacit permission to speak to people. It is impossible, given how close they are to the Duchess, that these chicks would have opened their mouths without her seal of approval. Meghan clearly reacts passionately to the world and people around her, however, this sort of behavior has no place in the fern. The current British monarchy's longevity can be put down to the fact it has largely run more like a dispassionate business, albeit with cracking perks, than a loving familial unit. Anna Pasternak, a royal biographer, wrote in The Telegraph recently, the firm requires that it operates as a diplomatic, rational machine. What is not tolerated, far less understood, is emotion. Ironically, what is viewed as weakness on the part of courtiers, is perceived by the public to be a significant royal weakness also. Time and time again they have faced harsh, but fair, criticism for their inability to publicly express their feelings such as after the Aberfan disaster which claimed the lives of 116 children and Diana's death. Sadly, what first attracted Harry to Meghan, that is her exquisite capacity to feel and to be open about those feelings, also seems to be the very trait which could spell her royal undoing. As Pasternak says, excitable characters in the royal family who try to steer their own course tend not to reign triumphant. By contrast, the Duchess of Cambridge's tenure as a Windsor wife would only get the highest of performance review scores. She smiles broadly, scratch that, she beams, 
and curtsies and always looks just delightfully happy to be in whatever gloomy suburban church hall she finds herself in, surrounded by gawking commoners. Anger, sheer joy, and boredom never, ever cross her face, in public at least. God knows how pee set off she probably looks when she finds out that Prince George has just used her lace Alexander McQueen dress from last year's Ascot as a tadpole gnat. In the eyes of Buckingham Palace, her dedication to keeping all that messy emotions safely sequestered away from public view must surely rank as one of her more admirable qualities. Conversely, Meghan's openness and vivacity, and her seeming commitment to letting her in her most emotions show could be a crucial misstep one which ultimately might spell disaster for her future in the royal family. And that would be a massive shame. For her, for Harry, for their kids slash us and for us, her majest subjects. To the Buckingham Palace potentates I think it is definitely time rethink some of the royal KPIs.